Hey there, welcome to Drawing with Abby. In today's video, I'm gonna be drawing Power Girl on my Samsung Tab S6 uh, tablet using Clip Studio Paint. To start off with, you see that I'm using a TV, a link, seamless figure to help me figure out the pose of this drawing. This is something that I do sometimes when I'm trying to draw at a different angle that I'm just not used to, or I'm, I'm having a hard time just coming up with an interesting pose. I'll just play around with the figure and then go ahead and uh, use that as my reference. Um, in this particular case, you can see that I'm using a male figure, even though I'm drawing a female um, character. Uh, it's pretty interchangeable when it comes to just nailing down the pose, but if you're looking for something that has a little bit more anatomy reference, they do offer a female figure um, with this series. Um, it's just that I do not want to be delisted uh, with my YouTube account. So this is why I'm just using the male figure for this pose. But again, it, that's only really relevant if you're looking for some sort of anatomy reference here. I'm just focused on using that particular figure to help build out my pose. So you can see I started off with my sketch with just trying to block out the basic shapes. And then once I was able to nail down, you know, where my knees were hitting, where my elbows were hitting, all that sort of stuff, um, I put my figure aside and then I just focused on uh, building out the sketch. Um, so going from big blocky shapes, refining that down, um, by uh, applying some anatomy and you can see me slowly continue that process and refining further further down. There are uh, some challenges that you run into by using a male uh, figure to try to draw a female figure and, and vice versa. Uh, so you can see here uh, in this particular drawing my torso is, is too large uh, in comparison to the character's hips uh, so you'll see me try to shave that down um, later on in the sketch. I also had run into some issues um, with the head uh, size as well as the arm size uh, at the top of the drawing. So you'll see me try to address that later on in the sketch. And these are just sort of things that you're going to run into as you're um, using reference and you're just learning to, to use them uh, more effectively. Um, I've been using reference for a very long time when it comes to my sketches, but even still, I do run into issues where I drawing from my head rather than what I see and which is a, a mistake I think a lot of us make when we're drawing we try to overcorrect with what we're seeing to what we're used to drawing um, so uh, what you'll end up with is sort of a Frankenstein between your reference and what your mind thinks uh, that reference should look like and you should always let your reference win out in that sort of battle um, this particular piece is kind of unique because I'm trying to run away from my reference by transposing what I know about female anatomy. Um, so you can see here, again, I've shaved down that torso. That torso was way too wide for a more female figure. Um, so I, I've reshaped that as I was drawing it. Um, but what was helpful from using that, that figure was to understand um, exactly how the pose should operate um, and uh, challenges with things in perspective. It also helped me out with that. So as you can see, I every time that I'm applying a new stage of my sketch where I went from blocky to adding to anatomy to refining that anatomy, I use a soft eraser brush to slowly erase my previous lines um, to the point where it's still visible, but faint enough where I'm when I'm applying a new, a new lines, I'm not being confused which was my original line and what is my new lines. And that's something you'll see me do throughout this sketch as I refine, 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 and work on the different elements of the sketch. Here, you can see that I'm adding these horizontal lines across the surface of the forearm. And that's a trick that I use pretty often when it comes to working on limbs or torsos or even just the head. And that helps me to sort of understand uh, how the shape is working in terms of anatomy as well as foreshortening in perspective. Um, it's a great tool. It's a great little technique. Um, I highly recommend that you guys use that in your own drawings. When it comes to drawing hands, there really isn't uh, any tricks other than uh, practicing over and over again. Doing a lot of hand studies helps. Um, some people have different methods that they use, like the, the mitts uh, is something that a lot of people use. Uh, for me, my, myself, I try to work out the shapes of the fingers individually, and that's what I find gets the, the best results. But 
Um, maybe in the future, I'll post a video just specifically about doing hand studies and, and some of the techniques that you can use. Uh, but again, it, it, none of the techniques in the world can, um, can really help you understand the shapes of hands and, and draw hands in different poses other than tons of practice, doing tons of studies so that you become comfortable with it and you kind of know the anatomy of the hand inside out. So here you can see I'm refining uh, the sketch uh, on the face uh, stage, or sorry, the face area. Uh, you'll notice that with a lot of my sketches, I, tr I tend not to draw the face right away. Um, I kind of leave that up to somewhere midway through the sketch. Um, and that's just because it allows me just to focus more on the anatomy and the shape and just sort of get the big picture things done and get that nail down solid before I spend any time working on the face. When I first started drawing, um, I would always start with the face. I would always start with the head, draw up the face, and then try to figure out what I was doing with the rest of the body after. And it was always a terrible experience. And I would maybe get uh, out of 10 illustrations I would do, maybe one of them would be kind of serviceable. Um, I find when I focus on everything else first, if I focus on um, the pose, my perspective, my proportions, if, if I can get those things down first, then I can worry about the face and um, come up with an illustration. Um, a, a serviceable illustration more often than not and you know so that average has changed over the years and that really just comes down to focus, focusing on the bigger things so drawing here pair there are some great tips on drawing here there's different ways of doing it uh for me what i like to do is to draw the big shape the big silhouette of the hair first and then sort of break that down into um bigger shapes and then once I've broken that down into bigger shape, or sorry, into sub shapes, um, then within those sub shapes, I'll just start adding the texture of the hair. And you're sort of really cheating um, by not drawing uh, the hair fully. Instead, what you're doing is sort of implying um, all the details of the hair by just focusing on the shapes first. So you get the what the volume of the hair is and the movement of the hair, and then sort of adding in those little elements, those little details of, of the the particular hairs um, without actually drawing every single hair in the illustration. And so you can see here, what I'm doing now is sort of adding the elements of the costume. Um, and again, this is, again, I have a very similar philosophy um, to, to the face as I do to drawing um, elements of the costume or details of the costume. So focus on your anatomy first, focus on the, on the pose and the perspective and the proportions. And then you can start detailing um, the different elements of the of the costume, um, unless there's something about the costume that's uh, pretty uh, particular or you know integral to the anatomy of the character. Let's say character has a tail or you know big horns or anything like that that's going to affect the anatomy in some way, um, like giant wings, for example. Um, that those things can be integral to the anatomy and, and sort of figure those things out earlier in the illustration. But for, you know, jackets, capes, um, hair, uh, belts, uh, you know, what type of boots they're wearing, those things can be figured out after you figured out the anatomy itself. Um, so that's exactly what you see we do here. And you can see I just played around with the hand shape, um, trying not to do sort of the flat uh, fist that we normally see with most poses. Uh, I tried to, you know, raise the knuckle and try to play around with how the fingers are working. So now what you see me doing here is I'm going to take a slight detour uh, on this illustration. I wasn't too thrilled about the head. Um, thought maybe I might get away with doing something a little bit more interesting. So instead of uh, starting my sketch all over again, what it is a duplicated the layer. Um, so I kept my original sketch. Uh, on the new layer, I slightly erased the, the head and now I'm sort of sketching in um, a different head shape. I thought maybe um, drawing the head at a slightly different angle would be um, would be interesting or um, I might like it better. Um, so I just quickly did that, um, taking a look how it looks overall with the pose. Um, and eventually, I decided uh, after mucking around with this for a little bit and you see me go through that process, which is decided I had to write the first time, 
Uh, I wanted to do it the head on, but it's great to keep questioning yourselves, uh, keep challenging yourself throughout the illustration. And this is something that I talk about almost in all of my videos. Um, doesn't matter which stage you are in your illustration, if you're inking, if you're coloring, um, especially if you're sketching, just question what you're doing. Ask, ask yourself why, ask yourself, is this something that I like? Is this what I intend? Um, is this, does this look correct? Um, is there a better way to do this? Uh, just keep constantly challenging yourself. And you can see, I really, really did try um, in terms of trying out a different head shape. Um, but I think if I if memory serves me, it's been a while since I've, I've actually drawn this. I'm, I'm recording the, the audio much later. Um, I think I decided to go back to my original sketch. Um, and that's... And that's okay. It's, it's it's okay to spend a little bit of time experimenting and and trying to uh, figure things out. Um, that's the whole point of going through the sketch process is to is to try these different options to explore. Um, and as you go through that, um, you might find uh, new solutions to a visual problem that you hadn't considered before, or you might uh, in the, in my particular case. Um, find out that you know you were on the right track and you actually feel more confident about the track that you were on because you did take the time to explore and, and try to work outside of it. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what it's like drawing on the Samsung Tab S6. So I'm assuming if you're watching this video, it's because you either own one or you're looking to purchase one. Um, my experience with this tablet has been fantastic. I did not get it day one. I got it uh, much later after it came out. I believe this is the 2019 model that I picked up. Um, and I picked it up in 2021, something like that. Um, and it is a great, great device. Um, it's very well priced. Uh, it can stand its own against some of the other devices. I recently went into an Apple store um, to test out the Apple Pencil on an iPad. I don't own an iPad that can work with the Apple Pencil. Um, so I just went to the Apple Store just to test it out really quickly. Um, I've heard fantastic things about the Apple Pencil and seeing the out artwork that a lot of people create with it, uh, especially in Procreate. It's a reputation I think is well deserved. However, when I tested it out, I found that the drawing experience was remarkably similar to what I get on this particular tablet. Um, so I didn't feel like the need to, to trade in my tablet or to purchase one. Um, I like, honestly, if you guys are looking to purchase a tablet and you're weighing, um, which tablet to get, um, it really, for me, the choice really came down to the fact that I don't own any other Apple products. Um, I'm not really invested in that ecosystem. Um, so I wanted to get uh, a device that can complement my my Windows desktop machine and my my phone if I could you know sync my files back and forth um, and I can use my pens actually between my phone and my tablet I can use the exact same pen so that that helped make my decision um, so that that was it that was my purchasing um, thought process and if you guys are going through the whole same sort of process then yeah I highly recommend this tablet if you guys are already invested in the Samsung ecosystem or um, you're, you're, you would prefer an Android device, this is a fantastic device, especially when you pair it with a drawing app like Artflow or Clip Studio Paint or, or Corel uh, or Painter Mobile. Um, all those apps are great. So yeah, so this was my illustration. I hope you guys like it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or on this topic, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, keep drawing.